Blessings to you, members of St. Paul's, as well as all of our internet guests who have joined us for this evening, Wednesday, midweek Lenten service. Tonight, it is our privilege to have Pastor Craig Mulbach, who is the pastor at St. John's Lutheran Church Sowers in Seymour, Indiana, sharing the word of God with us. We have been going through the theme, Eyes on Jesus, from Hebrews chapter 12, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And so tonight, Pastor Mulbach shares with us a message on the theme, Worldly Eyes, talking about how the world views things versus how we as Christians view things. I pray that this service will be a blessing to you and your families as you worship with us together. The first reading for this evening is taken from Isaiah chapter 13. Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel, with wrath and fierce anger, to make the land a desolation and to destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of the heavens and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be dark at its rising, and the moon will not shed its light. I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their iniquity. I will put an end to the pomp of the arrogant and lay low the pompous pride of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A second reading this evening is taken from 1 John chapter 2. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, and the desires of the eyes, and the pride and possessions, is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, third reading for this evening is taken from John chapter 18. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting, that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
name of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. You know, when we hear someone say, so-and-so is worldly, what do we mean by that? What do we mean when we say those words? That word, that adjective worldly, has two different meanings we want to look at this evening. The first use of that word is to have a lot of practical experience with, with life and knowledge about life and the world in which we live. We might say someone has street smarts. The other use of that word is relating to the human world and ordinary life, the day in, day out of life, rather than focusing on any kind of religious or spiritual matters. So in the readings tonight, we see both senses of that term coming out in the life of Pilate as well as the religious leaders that were around him, and as well as the crowds and the soldiers as well. They all were looking at Jesus from through worldly eyes. You know from history that the Roman Empire, and still today you see it in politics as well, even in our own day and age, that you don't rise to a level of power like Pilate did and enjoy that without being worldly wise, so to speak. And so as governor, everything boiled down to convincing the emperor that you being around was worthwhile. So above everything else, you looked out for number one. You didn't look out for other people. And again, even with this uh, COVID vir virus that we're dealing with, the coronavirus, again, the temptation is to look at things from a worldly perspective, even in light of that as well. And again, we see in our day and age people taking advantage of the situation to elevate themselves in the position of, pilot, of power. But Pilate was a man with worldly desires and ambitions, and Pilate also was worldly in the sense that he didn't really care too much about the religious matters that were around him. So to, the Jew, to, to him, the Jews were just a thorn in his side. But given all of that, it's surprising to see Pilate and the religious leaders here uh, joining sides against Jesus. And as I, I read, Pilate didn't think that Jesus was guilty of anything, but he would rather give in to the mob than put his position of power in jeopardy. So he hands Jesus over to them to be crucified. And the leaders of the, the Jewish population there had worldly eyes as well. You see, the Sadducees saw the population of the popularity of Jesus as some kind of a threat to their power and their position. And so they sought to kill him. Same too with the Pharisees. Jesus they viewed as a competitor for their attention. And so, again, they wanted to crucify him as well. And the crowds just kind of followed along. And finally, the soldiers also had worldly eyes as they, they knew what a king was supposed to look like. And so when they look at Jesus, they say, this ain't no king. And so they mock him and by saying, hail, king of the Jews. It's kind of ironic that all these groups kind of merge and align themselves uh, against Jesus. And Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. Our Lord goes on to say, he has come to bear witness to the truth. And we see Pilate's disregard to religious matters by saying, what is truth? And again, we live in that culture even today, the truth is relative. And so there is no objective truth, so everybody has their own little truth to themselves. This evening, though, I want us to think about, not only did the crowds and the religious leaders cry for Jesus' crucifixion, I want us tonight to remember and to take to heart that our Heavenly Father also cries out, crucify Him. And also our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ cries out, crucify Him me. For as the scriptures say, whoever does the will of God abides forever. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has come to fulfill his Father's will, to draw all people to himself on the cross, bearing the sins of the whole world, 
dying for the life of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son to reconcile the whole world to himself. So tonight, I ask you, was his death for you? Well, are you in the world? The answer to that, as you know, is yes. The Lamb of God takes away the sin of the whole world. You were grafted into Christ through your baptism. All your sins have been placed on him. Therefore, they are as far as the east is from the west. No shame weighs you down. That in Christ Jesus you are free, free from death, free from hell. Your Lord has taken that all upon himself. He has given you life in his name. And as our Lord says, his kingdom is not of this world, so you were called out of this world to be grafted into him. You are not of this world as well. The scriptures say, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden in, with Christ in God. In Christ, you have life, you have light, you have peace. I want to leave you with these words from Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Consider your calling as brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise according to the worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even the things that are not to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boasts in the Lord. And so as we face the challenges of the day, we do so with our heads held high, because in Christ we have the victory. To him be the glory. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keeps our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.